Hello friends, in this video, we will learn the Wildlife Protection Act. So the Wildlife Protection Act is to provide for the protection of wild animals, birds and plants. So until then, there were existing rules that were prohibiting hunting. But later, as I, I have already mentioned in previous videos, in the later half of the 20th century, in 1970s, people were becoming more conscious about the environment, about the environmental pollution as well as the need for protecting other animals and plants. Even though hunting was a hobby at the beginning of the 20th century, later the perspectives began to change. People began to identify that the animals is a depleting source, resource, and we need to protect them. So even in the national parks or even in the places where animals were plenty in forest, these wild animals and plants were facing lots of threats due to hunting and illegal use. So this act was implemented with a view to protect wild animals, birds and plants. So this act is an important statute that provides a powerful legal framework for prohibition of hunting, protection and management of wildlife habitats, establishment of protected areas, regulation and control of trade in parts and products derived from wildlife. So you know many of the parts of wild animals are often used as trophies. For example, the tusk of an elephant or any other animal is often used as a trophy by many many people. So those are regulated by this act and then the management of zoos are, big, are brought under the provisions of this act. So broadly all the perspectives, all the legal frameworks included in this act are aimed at protection of animals from being abused. Now for very specific protection, this act together with other successive amendments provide for several categories of protected areas national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, tiger reserves, conservation reserves, community reserves are different categories of protected areas that you can see around. Maybe you have heard about some of the national parks in India or some of the wildlife sanctuaries or tiger reserves. So in every state you can see national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and other reserves that are specifically for protecting animals. So the Wildlife Protection Act gives teeth and power to all the provisions for protecting animals within these protected areas. For example, nowadays you can see if an animal is being killed in a national park, that is a very serious issue and serious legal penalties can be given to the abuser or the perpetrator of violence. And this has become the new norm because of the act has brought into the realm of Indian law, many provision for protecting wildlife. Now this act provides for setting up of wildlife advisory board. So as you have seen, most of the act brings in some boards because there needs some specific mechanism to look into various issues. So when it comes to the matters relating to wildlife, the wildlife act provides for wildlife advisory board. Uh, advisory board. And another important feature of this act is that this act classifies the flora and fauna that means the plants and animals into six schedules and under each schedule different categories of animals are included. For example the six schedules are the in the first and second schedule the schedule 1, schedule 1 and part 2 of schedule 2 are provided for absolute protection. So if anything is done against any of the animals under schedule 1 or part 2 of schedule 2 then very high penalties are given for them. So let us have a look at the schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Act. So here you can see the schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act. What are the animals that you see here? For example the clouded leopard, the chinkara or Indian gazelle desert fox, the gangetic dolphin, golden cat, the Indian elephant is given special protection, Indian lion, 
so you can see many of the animals that need special protection in this group so this is the list of schedule 1 schedule 1 there are there are amphibians the gharials then indian egg eating snake pythons then fishes are there birds are there and you can see a lot of the blood pheasant the chia pheasant the great indian bustard all these are the great indian hornbill all these are special animals that need special protection because they are very few in number and so they are included in the schedule 1 of the indian the wildlife schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act so similarly there are schedule 2 and other schedules and different categories of animals are included in different schedules when we come into the schedule 3 and schedule 4 these schedules include animals requiring lesser protection and in schedule 5 we include animals which may be hunted for example common crow fruit bat mice rat all these animals are permitted to be hunted and they are provided under schedule 5 of the wildlife protection act then under schedule 6 plants are included and plants which are prohibited from cultivation and planting planting are included under schedule 6 so these are the six schedules of the wildlife protection act you can just try to remember these schedules under the various degrees of protection that we are offering and this act also gives certain penalties for breaking any condition a person who breaks any of the condition or of of any license or permitted permit granted under this act is guilty of an offense against this act and what are the punishment imprison, imprisonment for up to three years and a fine of rupees 25,000 is given under this act alone and this act also prescribes punishments for offenses against animals included in highly protected categories so these are the pro penalties provided under this act so i hope you got a broad understanding about the wildlife protection act which specifically is for protecting wildlife so we have gone through the various levels of protection protected areas that are offered under this act then we go through the six schedules of animals and plants and various other provisions of the act i hope this portion is clear for you thank you